Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to Sarnet Television. Well, right now, across the other side of the studio, we've got young Chris. And young Chris is taking apart an L21 beacon. He's going to show you the difference between a high dome and a low dome and how they go together. Let's go check it out. Thank you, Stuart. The Wheel and Engineering L21 series of beacons is today's modern cousin to the previous 2022 strobe series. So if you're thinking, God, that sure looks like the 2022 that I've seen around for many, many years, DOT trucks, fire, what have you. Well, you're right. Resembles the classic with a new LED spec. So really with that same height profile, like the 2022, you can get it in a high dome profile or in a low dome profile. You can get different base configurations on the L21 series to suit your application. So if you're going to use it on a rig where you just need it on and off the roof as appropriate for the workday, it's available in a magnetic mount. So with that 90 pound magnet on the base there, so nice and tight, grab to the roof of your vehicle. And also for ease of operation, 12 volt plug in, go ahead, plug it into your vehicle's 12 volt outlet and incorporated is an on off switch as well as momentary for flash pattern adjustment. The permanent mount version of the L21 series comes with a pigtail wiring harness and a double purpose base. So with that, the base can either be flat mounted onto your application, affixed with rivets, screws, or bolts through the polycarbonate black base here. So you can see there's a total of one, two, three mounting holes. So it'll affix nice and tight to your application. Or if you don't want to flat mount it, you can affix it via a standard one inch pipe thread. So incorporated into the polycarbonate base, dead center here, standard threading. So for your application, configure your harness, drop it through the pipe, thread the beacon on as appropriate. The L21's class one SAE output. So for your fire apparatus and DOT compliance, great beacon, got you covered there. The insides, I'm gonna go ahead and show you is the same between both beacons. Really the only difference is the dome configuration. So low and high again. So to get things started, I'm gonna go ahead, remove the dome on the L21 high version here. It's affixed with two Phillips head screws. So one on the front, one on the back. With the screws removed, go ahead, give it a wiggle and a twist, and the one-piece polycarbonate dome comes free. Inside the beacon, you can see very simplistic and a nice, clean, solid finish. Full epoxying in the base here to cover all the electronics. And in the center, you have your diode tower. There's three diodes per section, total of four, so the nice rectangle here gives you a great 360 coverage to fill the dome profile here to give you a nice, big, intense blast of amber lighting. What I'm going to do really quick is go ahead, put power to the pigtail here so you can see the difference that you get through the optics of the dome. I'm going to go ahead, connect the ground. and connect the lead. Nice and bright, but without the dome, doesn't do too much. When you add the dome, more potent, more focused beam spread. So you can see that the diode tower fills the entire dome circumference here to give you a nice big footprint. Same case in the low profile dome, just happens to be the fact that this one physically is lower profile. So if you have a clearance issue, the low will suit that better than the high here. So again, if you're doing it side mounted on your truck, DOT, you need to fit it under rails, a box mount, utility body, what have you, the low dome, great solution. So again, if I take this off, you can see the difference between adding the dome and the tower without it. So again, the optics in the dome 
really help to boost the diode's intensity here to give you a nice, good, solid spread that's focused. Go ahead, take power away there. Good, take the dome here, go ahead and reaffix it. I'm just gonna go ahead, spin the base around here so I can match up the mount holes. Now before I screw this back on, I'm gonna show you an option that's available for the L21 series beacons. And the option happens to be a branch guard. It's available in a high profile, which I have here, and also in a low profile to suit the low profile dome. So the difference being, like the domes, the branch guard for the low unit, it's gonna sit lower physically, so there won't be a gap in the height profile it'll sit closer to the top of the beacon. Branch guard for the high, simple enough to install. You can see there's a slot here, slot here, and those will fix onto the two screws that hold the dome to the polycarbonate base. So go ahead, slide it on, and then you'll affix the screws in to hold the branch guard on so you have extra protection. So again, if these are going on kickouts, centered on the roof, utility trucks, DOT, plows, brush equipment, what have you, the branch guard will give you the extra protection that you need to keep it nice and safe. Go ahead, slide that off. Take the two screws, reaffix them. So again, polycarbonate dome affixed nice and firmly to the polycarbonate base. Go ahead, get this out of the way. So again, with the pigtail on the permanent mount version, you have a total of four wires, a ground and lead, a sink, and a flash pattern change. So if you have multiples around your vehicle, you can tie the patterns together so your beacons can be alternating or simultaneous for their flash pattern display. I'm gonna go ahead, take the alligator clips again, connect the lead and ground as appropriate. So when the unit's on and flashing, if you take the scan lock, which was the white with the violet tracing, momentarily touch it to 12 volts, it'll advance the flash pattern. So every time you tap it, it'll do an advancement. The unit itself has various flash patterns slows, fast, and randoms. So before you do your install, go ahead, get it set up, play with the scan lock wire to get the pattern set that'll best suit the application and your flash pattern need. Again, for the low unit, for use is magnetic, where you're gonna put it on the roof for the job site, take it away when it's no longer needed. 90 pound magnet, as I mentioned earlier. So fix that onto your roof as appropriate, to the left, to the right, centered up, wherever you feel the placement's appropriate. Go ahead, plug this in to your 12 volt outlet. Nice and bright as you can see. 360 degree output. And you can see with the dome inside, boosting through the optics here, there's no blind spots. So no matter where you have the beacon, always nice and same intensity all the way around it. If you want, go ahead, click the momentary switch. You can adjust the flash patterns. And what's nice with the magnetic mount and also with the permanent mount, when you turn the units off, turn them back on, they're going to retain the flash pattern that they've been set to. So again, go through a couple more patterns here. And you can see, in this case here, flash pattern mimics the previous 2022 strobe. So if you have older rigs with 2022s and you want to introduce the more modern L21, go ahead, set the flash patterns, and the trucks themselves at distance are going to look the same since it's a flash pattern that's very close between the two different units. 
When you're done with the magnetic mount, go ahead, turn it off on the 12 volt switch, off the roof, and stash it away as appropriate. So there you have it, a bit of a look at the Wheel and Engineering L21 series Amber Beacons, high profile permanent mount, low profile magnetic mount, and again, various options are available. So you can get the low in the permanent mount, you can get the high in the magnetic mount. So whichever version will best suit your application, go ahead and order it as appropriate. And back to you, Stuart. Well, thanks a million, Chris. Really appreciate that. I'm Stuart, and you've been watching Sino Television.